Hello everybody, uh, warm summer greetings to all of you. I hope you're all safe and healthy. It's already scorching heat outside and I think uh, in some parts of India it's beyond 45 degrees. So what are you doing to stay protected from the heat and the UV rays? Today being National Sunscreen Day, we are going to take this opportunity to talk about sunscreen, sunblock and I Dr. Rituparna Dash, a MD dermatologist uh, practicing at Dash Dermatology Noida and uh, Max Super Speciality Hospital Vaishali. I'm here to uh, have an interactive session with you all to uh, discuss about sunscreen, to burst all the myths, to help you pick up the best sunscreen which actually works for you and uh, uh, help you, uh, you know, uh, if it, the, you know, decide how, when to apply, how much to apply, um, and eventually at the end, I also have a little tip that I would like to give you at the end of the session about uh, skin glow. Everybody wants to glow, even so. What can we do while staying at home to and still have glowing stain, skin? So stay tuned. Put all your questions on the comment section and uh, so that uh, ask all your queries and whatever you want to ask about sun protection, sun screen and sun block. Uh, so to begin with, there is uh, this uh, perpetual question all the time, you know, and especially now. Now that we are all, uh, you know, uh, indoors, do we still need to apply sunscreen? Of course, yes we still need to apply sunscreen every day and we need to apply sunscreen even if we are indoors now why that is something i'll deal with later so stay tuned uh, but before we begin with let's begin with the basics you know so uh, when you look at a sunscreen bottle you will see that there is something called as spf and that's what traditionally we have been used to you know um, uh, the uh, picking up a sunscreen when you want to pick up a sunscreen that's exactly what we're looking at a sunscreen so uh, you know what is sun SPF it's a sun protection factor what it means is that how long it will take to burn your skin if you have not applied sunscreen and when you have applied sunscreen so let's say normally you have not applied any sunscreen and it takes about 10 minutes to burn your skin when you apply a sunscreen which uh, which has SPF 15 it would take 150 minutes more to burn so that is like about 15 times uh, uh, you know sun protection factor that you get from your sunscreen to protect you for, for 150 minutes so but it's not like a linear scale so it doesn't mean that if you let's say uh, you have applied a sunscreen which is SPF 15 and that's giving you a, a sun protection of, of 93 percent SPF 30 is giving you a sun protection of 97 percent SPF 50 gives you a sun protection of uh, you know 98 percent so uh, it's like it goes it goes variably right it's not exactly a linear scale like that and believe me there is no sunscreen Rem remember this there is no sunscreen which gives you 100 percent protection now uh, when you when you say that a doctor you've said that you know nine if spf 30 and spf 50 hardly there is a percent difference so it's like spf 30 is giving 97 percent uh, you know sun protection spf 50 is giving 98 percent protection so you know so it's it's the biggest myth that if you use a sunscreen of higher protection you're going to get a, you know, better coverage you know so higher SPF doesn't mean better protection this is something you must all understand you know how can you make your sunscreen more effective to do so you have to uh, remember to apply sunscreen more often now the best of the best sunscreen loses its efficacy in three hours so you have to reapply your sunscreen every three hours. So I tell my patients that you need to apply at let's say 9 a.m., then 12, 
and then three. Some newer sunscreens are in market, which lasts a little bit more longer, and that's about six hours. So then you can apply, let's say, one before leaving for work at 9 a.m., and then one in between, you know, at lunch break, and that's about 2 p.m. I see a lot of people have joined in and that's Vikas, there is Sahaji, there is Sachin, there is Piyush, hi Ashish Verma, hi Samrat. So there are a lot of people who joined and, um, I, and this is, is very nice, warm uh, you know, summer greetings to all of you. Uh, you know, you can put in all your uh, queries about sunscreen, sun protection uh, in the comment section. So moving on to how much quantity of sunscreen that we need to apply. That is also very important. So, you know, especially we women, we tend to apply sunscreen very little because it's greasy. We don't want our, you know, face to look oily and greasy and more sunscreens are. I accept that. So what we do is we under apply the amount of the sunscreen and that leads to, let's say your sunscreen has, it is mentioned that it is SPF 30, but you are applying instead of the amount that you're supposed to apply, you're applying half that amount. So your SPF could be about 5 or 10, depending on, you know, how much quantity you've applied. So the ideal quantity that you need to apply for face and neck is a teaspoon and a half. A teaspoon and a half. So this is the required quantity that you need to apply. So if you're applying anything less than this, it is not giving you the SPF that sunscreen claims because you're not applying the exact dosage. It's like a medicine, you know, so you have, you have to remember that the dosage is very important. Now there's very, something very interesting. I don't know if you all know that SPF is only protecting you from UVB rays. So the you know, sun spectrum uh, has the uh, three harmful rays that you, we are always bothered about is from amongst the UV rays is one is UVA ray, UVB and UVC. So thankfully C is not, you know, the ozone layer is taking care of that and it's not reaching uh, you know, through the atmosphere. But we are bothered about UVA and UVB. A sun SPF, you know, is factor mentioned in your sunscreen is only protecting you from UVB rays and you what does UVB rays do they cause you know redness they cause skin allergies they cause sunburn so they cause redness sunburn and skin allergies but there is also UVA rays and in fact UVA rays they penetrate deeper into the skin and they cause long-term issues like skin wrinkles skin aging pigmentation and skin cancer so this is a sunscreen this is the ray basically that you need to avoid even more now spf doesn't give you this protection what gives you this protection if you see some new sunscreens have this star rating in them you know so that's called a boot star rating you know so, the, so this boot star rating is an indicator of uva protection okay and uva uh, you know uh, so what is the ideal uh, you know protection that you require for indian skin so how much spf should be in your sunscreen how much star rating should be in your sunscreen uh, for indian skin so spf 30 is good and uh, uh, a star rating of three and above is good this is this is good enough so you don't need a sunscreen which is 50 and above and etc that's not recommended so you know indian skin we are blessed you know with lot of melanin and we don't require so western skin which is bleached out of melanin and they don't have so the melanin is like an umbrella you know so it when the sun rays come the melanin absorbs it and it kind of opens up like an umbrella and then protects the you know the you know skin layer and the cells beneath you know so it's kind of protective now uh, uh, because with brown skin or let's say you know uh, we we ha already have enough melanin to open up like an umbrella and absorb the uv rays so we we, we could easily do with spf 30 but western skin which uh, you know or caucasian skin uh, they require higher 
uh, SPF because they are fair skinned and they're already bleached. They don't, they hardly have a melanin compared to us. And yeah, there was this interesting thing that, you know, you would like to know over here that um, the, uh, you would ask that, doctor, they're dark skinned, you know, the type of four, five, six, you know, who, uh, the, the, uh, the African skin. Do you think they also require sunscreen? Everybody requires sunscreen. So, you know, they may not burn, they will not burn, but they're not, but you, you, but you need sunscreen to prevent skin aging, skin cancer, uh, and uh, from wrinkles and, you know, pigmentation as well, right? So you, that, that's why everybody, if you're fair skin, you're brown skin, you are dark skinned, everybody requires sunscreen round the clock. Now, uh, e remember we discussed about this little thing that, you know, even if we are indoors, do we need to apply sunscreen? We were talking about that earlier. And I told you we'll talk about it. Uh, we'll answer this question now. So the question is, yes, you need to apply sunscreen indoors. Why? Because these days, we are hooked to our electronic devices from the laptop from the mobile screens you know and uh, for that matter uh, our homes also have a lot of led lights all over our offices have led lights and all of them emit high intensity visible light which is blue light and blue light it does enough harm you know, so about um, if we compare the damage, so about 30 minutes of UV uh, rays exposure and uh, about 13 minutes of UV uh, uh, rays exposure and 30 minutes of high intensity visible light exposure is same. So, you know, there are a lot of uh, people who say, Doctor, I, I am working indoors all the you know, time. I'm always, always in the office. I leave very early in the morning about 8 o'clock. And then I'm, leave, I'm coming back from the office at around 7. So uh, I'm always inside the office. I don't have a field job, you know, uh, or I'm a housewife. I don't have to go out for work. So then why do I need to apply sunscreen? You need to apply because of these reasons. You know, so if you're, because most of the workplaces these days, all of them have LED light exposure and we, we can't do away with it. So we have created this artificial, you know, harmful rays for ourselves, you know, so it, even though it's energy efficient, uh, but yes, it is doing a lot of harm to our skin. So next time you pick up a sunscreen, make sure your sunscreen has high intensity visible light protection or HEV rating or mentioned in it so that means it is also giving you you know blue light protection so there's certain botanicals you know uh, which are uh, if they are present in your sunscreen they are giving you this blue light uh, you know protection like a defense like fern block if the, these are some ingredients the botanical ingredients which if they are present in your sunscreen they kind of you know give you the blue light protection as well so next time you have to when you uh, you know look up for a sunscreen you have to make sure that you are not only sun protected but also blue light protected because artificial light is also causing you as much harm so okay now uh, uh, what is the art is, like a lot of patients have you know a lot of pigmentation problem one of them very common is melasma and uh, then there is rosacea, which causes a lot of redness and there are freckles. Now, if you have something like this, then you need to check if your sunscreen has, you know, uh, infrared rays protection as well. So, you know, the ha as much, so like, you know, if you notice this, that in winters, the, the, there is, it's still sunny, but it's not scorching. It's not, you know, burning your skin. And in summers, you know, it is burning. It, it, what also increases in summer is that the infrared rays also increase so that's why the heat so let's say you're cooking also inside and in front of a gas stove and etc you know so you are exposed to infrared rays more like the sun rays so you need to check that uh, you know if your sunscreen has IR uh, mentioned in it or infrared rays protection mentioned in it this may not be necessary for everybody or round the clock but then uh, 
if you if you are you know already having some kind of you know pigmentation problem or if you have rosacea etc then then you will have to pick up something uh, you know which has men ir rating also mentioned in it uh, besides uh, IR rating, you know, you've, if you've noticed that the sunscreens have this thing called uh, sweat resistant and uh, water resistant. Now, the mention of this word doesn't mean that you can go swimming with your sunscreen for three hours and say that I did apply sunscreen, you know. So it doesn't work like that. When it is mentioned for three hours, you know, uh, water resistant, it is for 30 minutes or 60 minutes depending on the brand, you know, but not beyond that. So you would have to come out of the water, reapply and then go inside if you're swimming for even longer. That also applies if you are, you know, going out in a coastal area. So, if, you know, so uh, uh, this is very interesting to understand that when you go higher the altitude or you go further into the sea or uh, near the sea, you know, the coastal areas, you would need you know, uh, sunscreen uh, application more frequently over there. Okay, and you would need you would need a higher percentage over there. So you see the Ladakhi children. You know, even if it, it, it's so cold over there, uh, still their cheeks are all red. Now that's cute, but it's actually sunburned skin. You know, so that red cheeks is actually sunburned skin. So even if you're going to a higher altitude and it's quite cool over there, it doesn't mean that you know you don't have UV rays. In fact, you have more UV rays. So, so if you're living uh, in a higher altitude, uh, in spite of it being a temp temperate climate, you have to apply sunscreen. And that also applies to some people uh, who, uh, you know, uh, in a different profession like air hostesses so, or the cabin crew or the, uh, the pilots who are always on the go when who are flying in a high altitude, they have to apply a sunscreen which, uh, you know, has a higher SPF and uh, which also has you know in high intensity visible light protection because all the you know the lights inside the flight are all artificial lights you know so um, there are some th things that you need to take care but but you know th there's one more thing that i want to tell you over here is that a lot of uh, uh, parents who are conscious about sunscreen etc uh, they, they ask can i use this sunscreen for my child as well no so you can't use the, the, the same sunscreen that you use, you know, so this for your children. For children, you can use a physical sunscreen or a sunblock. So here we have to differentiate what is a sunscreen and a sunblock, you know. So sunscreen primarily means a chemical sunscreen and sunblock is a physical sunscreen. A physical sunscreen or sunblock is one that, you know, the cricketers apply on their noses, if you've noticed in, on, in, on the matches, you know, that this white thick layer on the nose. So that's what the, that is a physical sunscreen. How it acts is acts by, uh, you know, forming a layer over the skin and scattering the UV rays back again, you know. Chemical sunscreen, on the other hand, they penetrate inside the skin and they convert the harmful UV rays into a less damaging, you know, ray and absorb that ray, the wavelength of that ray. So chemical sunscreen, they penetrate into, inside the skin and physical sunscreens, they form a layer on the top. So, so physical sunscreens, you know, don't interact primarily with the skin, so that's safer. So for children, uh, you know, you pick up a sunscreen. Uh, so actually, I should correct myself. Pick up a sunblock. Pick up a physical sunscreen. You know, and if you also if you have a sensitive skin, some people, uh, you know, people tend to have very sensitive skin. Then probably a chemical sunscreen is not a good idea for you. You will have to pick up a physical sunscreen. Uh, in case you do not have, you know, a sunblock for your child, then you can also use calamine. Calamine has zinc oxide, you know. So this is the primary chemical which is there in your uh, sunblock. So this, uh, you know, chemical, uh, uh, all, this calamine also has zinc oxide and, and it gives you a fair amount of sun protection if you don't have absolutely any sunscreen at home, you know. So, uh, 
either ways you pick up a physical or a chemical sunscreen you have to make sure that you you know the ingredients in your in your sunscreen when you know the ingredients because not all ingredients are safe so if you ask me to you know doctor are sunscreens safe not all sunscreens are safe so how do we pick up the safe sunscreen the safe sunscreen is one which is mineral based or that is zinc oxide and titanium oxide based you know these are the primary chemicals that you can look at the back of your you know sunscreen uh, what are the harmful chemicals that you should completely avoid you know in your sunscreen that is oxybenzone and uh, parabens uh, and octazonate which is also you know these are the chemicals that you can avoid in your sunscreens you know so if they are already claim that these chemicals are not safe so we don't recommend you so you now that you know you, uh, you know you can it will be good for you to pick up a sunscreen because once i'm telling you this that you start applying sunscreen you have to apply it lifelong so might as well apply something which is safe right there are a lot of these uh, you know safe alternative sunscreens which are available in the form of a natural sunscreen so there are a lot of do it why uh, you know remedies and with uh, aloe vera etc available uh, on uh, you know tiktok and youtube so it's like um, these uh, you know do it why sunscreens are available so if my patients also ask me do i apply this on my own and you know so i don't use a you know medicated sunscreen because it's greasy and etc so believe me uh, even if it had even if the do it why preparation that you are making uh, even if you uh, you know uh, it was easily available and it was safe It, you can still never correctly measure sun protection factor in the final product that you're making at home so you can never ensure if that sunscreen that do it why sunscreen that you're making yourself at home you know that is actually effective so even though aloe vera is amazing you know as a beautiful uh, skin rejuvenating product which is available you know naturally i wouldn't uh, recommend those you know do it yourself uh, you know uh, tips to take uh, to apply on your uh, on your own you know so you will have to pick up a medicated sunscreen uh, to you know so see if you want your sunscreen to work for you like that but there is a natural sunscreen there's a very interesting naturally available sunscreen it's not available in india but it's available in in our neighboring country which is burma so uh, the burmese people have this uh, you know a uh, tree called the tanaka tree you know so uh, they use the bark the wood um, and the root you know the extract of all this uh, that is mixed like a paste or a gel like thing and they apply it over their face over the exposed hands and etc when they going to the work uh, like the farms and etc and that is uh, actually a naturally available sunscreen so i gave you a way you know if you really want to look for a natural uh, sunscreen this is a natural sunscreen you know so uh, it looks like a chandan so uh, like that it's a little orangish tinge in that so it looks like chandan paste or sandalwood paste uh, but it's a different uh, tree altogether so it has cooling properties as well as sun protection uh, properties so you know so it is the only naturally available sunscreen you know like that now uh, there are many patients who don't apply sunscreen thinking that i already have vitamin deficiency and if i apply uh, you know sunscreen will it make vitamin synthesis you know uh, even worse yes, so no it doesn't work like that so we are just protecting uh, you know uva and uvb rays with the help of a sunscreen and vitamin d sun synthesis which is happening in your skin is not hampered at all you know so you can absolutely you know safely freely apply sunscreen or uh, you know on all exposed parts of the body and that doesn't hamper your uh, you know vitamin d uh, you know absorption or synthesis at all that's some that's a biggest myth that these are. so there are already studies uh, you know that, so this this coming out of evidence based literature and not like just i'm just you know i'm just telling you right away like that so uh, this is there are already studies and they've proven it that there is no you know um uh, 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 cor correlation with that and vitamin d production or synthesis is not hampered at all if you use sunscreen regularly 
so uh, uh, there is there's something uh, uh, my uh, lady patients ask me very uh, often is that doctor i use already a foundation or my mouth moisturizer has spf do i additionally need to up still apply a sunscreen because it will spoil my makeup yes you have to apply additionally a sunscreen that little amount of spf in your foundation or your uh, you know moisturizer is not enough you have to apply a sunscreen and like i said uh, earlier you need to apply a sunscreen which has spf 30 uh, and which has a star rating of you know 3 uh, or above and uh, you know if you are do doing a lot of you know work um, in front of the computer uh, and etc then you'll have to pick up a sunscreen which protects you from blue light as well so these are the thing that you need to check and just that little spf 15 in your you know moisturizer or serum or your foundation is it's giving you some protection okay but that, that's not enough so like that uh, and The, and you have to apply sunscreen around the year you can yeah, so it's in some, you know what the, actually happens in summer it's only the heat which increases in winter the heat decreases the uv rays are same throughout the year you know these days you have these apps which can check your uv index where when you travel from one place to another and etc this how much is the uv index today at this place and at this time and it will tell you so uv rays are there throughout the year and you have to apply a sunscreen throughout the year so uh, earlier we used to tell our patients uh, you know that you apply sunscreen when you are moving uh, out of home 15 minutes before uh, you know going out but now thanks to the pollution thanks to the uv rays penetration over the years you know the uv index has gone high and we have to stay protected so the you know so we are telling our patients now that you must apply sunscreen even if you are indoors and you must apply sunscreen round the year why you need to apply 15 minutes because because that is that the time it takes to absorb into the skin and start acting anything that you apply you know you see those masks that you have to that that you have to apply uh, you know these cosmetic masks which are also available it would be all written 15 minutes application you know leave it for 15 minutes then wash it off with water you know so that's exactly a time anything takes you know to get absorbed into the skin so much as your sunscreen so you have to give 15 minutes time so you just can't apply sunscreen and then you know go out and say it's working you have 15 minutes give it some time to start acting you know it's a little slow <laughs> so uh, we have covered many things about you know wh what things we need to look in in our uh, sunscreen how can you make your sunscreen more effective you know this is something i'm going to tell you so uh, the, uh, the, uh, but before this the, i would like to clear another myth that a lot of people have they say i am applying sunscreen regularly but my skin is still dull you know please remember sunscreen is not a skin brightening product it is not a skin fairness product it is not a tan removal product okay it is a protection product so it is protecting you from the artificial light and the sunlight so it is not making going to make you fairer but if you don't apply it often it is going to cause more trouble in the future so it's a cumulative effect you know this so for the years that you've not applied sunscreen so you've not applied sunscreen during a college days you didn't apply sunscreen as a kid and you know you start seeing the the, the early signs of wrinkles the sun spots the freckles you know uh, and the fine lines all of them start appearing at the age of 35 and 40 so you would you would notice that this wasn't happening with our parents who were you know where they saw the signs of aging much later uh, at 55 plus but now we are seeing it much earlier at 35 plus and that, that's one of the reasons why you need to start applying because this is the most important anti aging cream that you can think of you know as a, the sunscreen is a very important part of your anti aging skin care uh, routine that you start applying sun, sunscreen so uh, what you can do to make your sunscreen work better for you is that before you apply your sunscreen you top it up with a very powerful antioxidant and what is that vitamin c and ferulic acid so pick up a serum 
any brand that you would like and which has vitamin C and ferulic acid in it, take a drop of it and dab it all over your face after you washed it. Then you apply your sunscreen, apply your makeup and etc. Believe me, this antioxidant, uh, you know, serum that, uh, with this combination is going to protect you from pollution, going to protect you from UV rays, the free radicals basically, which are, you know, uh, released because of the ex pollution exposure and UV rays uh, exposure. And uh, so they're going to, they are additionally going to protect you. And then on top of it, you're also applying a sunscreen. So that, that works wonders. So this is something, you know, as an extra tip that you can take from me today, that you apply a vitamin C and a ferulic acid, uh, you know, base serum, and then top it up with a sunscreen uh, b before, uh, you know, going out, which is, which works quite good. And in summers, we, we can skip with a moisturizer if you already have a combination to normal skin. If you have dry skin, yes, you can, you definitely need to apply a moisturizer. But if you, if your serum already has uh, vitamin C, ferulic acid and hyaluronic acid, you probably can skip your moisturizer. So, you know, you, you know your sunscreen probably will not be that greasy like that and uh, so uh, you so that's uh, something that we uh, you know we need to uh, do if we want our skin to glow to skin to stay protected and uh, but then we're always talking about you know sun protection in terms of skin our hair also requires protection and there are uv uh, protection sprays uv rays pr protection sprays which you can spray on your hair and that is also you know uh, very uh, good to do uh, since they uh, uh, they after your towel dried hair you know when you, you set it you just spray it on the air over your hair uh, hair and it is working uh, and they, they provide protection their lip balms which have you know SPF mentioned in it so it, they will they will also help you uh, you know say keep your lip protected so you are you know so you we, we tend to forget these more other areas and we're always thinking about the face and neck all the time so uh, that so you need to know that you are these are the other uh, you know play, uh, areas that we can um, you know uh, uh, check Uh, so just going through a uh, few, uh, you know, comments over here. Uh, I have a lot of people who have logged in and for some reason I am not able to see the comments over here uh, after a few, com you know, comments. Uh, so yes, I have this question that, you know, uh, from Satya who is telling me that, doctor, I am a swimmer and what sunscreen should I use? Yes, you're very, this is a very interesting question. So whenever uh, you are going for a swim, make sure you have a, you use a sunscreen which has water resistant written in it. But that doesn't mean that you can go on swimming for two to three hours, you know, with the one single application. You would, because water resistant means for, you know, about um, uh, 30 to 60 minutes, depending on different brands. So you would have to re come out and reapply uh, uh, and after 15 minutes, you can go swimming again, you know. Now there is Mr. Salish and he's asking, is physical sunscreen only good for skin um, or chemical sunscreen combination is required? So see, if you're an adult, yeah, so a combination is what is the best thing and because we are so but for children since we can't use a physical uh, a chemical sunscreen and only physical sunscreen is recommended for them so for children let's stick to physical sunscreen for people who are very sensitive skin let's stick to physical sunscreen but for everybody else a combination of physical uh, and chemical sunscreens uh, is the ideal combination that you should look for in a sunscreen Mr. Vikas has a nice question. Ma'am, can I child also use sunscreen? Yes, absolutely. So your, your child can also use sunscreen and they, but they need to use a physical sunscreen. And in case they don't, you don't have a sunscreen available, then you can use, uh, uh, you know, a, a lactocalamine or a calamine preparation available, which also has the same zinc oxide, which is there in your physical sunscreen. And, and that's giving you at least some amount of protection, you know. Uh, 
I uh, yes, yeah, Sachin has a nice question. What SPF is ideal for Indian skin? SPF 30 is great, Sachin. So uh, for Indian skin, oh, uh, since we're blessed with melanin, we are brown skin. So SPF 30 is great. It gives you 97 per percent, you know, uh, protection. So SPF 30 is great for Indian skin. Make sure that you're looking also at boot star rating. So three plus uh, and above rating is recommended for Indian skin. Shahaji is asking me a nice question. During lockdown, I'm observing a little pigment on my face. So shall I still use sunscreen at home as well as I'm completely staying at home and avoid sun exposure, you know? Yes, uh, Shahaji, you're very right. Like I mentioned earlier, even if you're indoors, you need to apply. And I'm sure you're working from home. So you, when you're working from home, you're, you are almost, you know, for uh, 10, 12 hours, you're going to be in front of the laptop uh, or the mobile screen. And all of these LED devices are going to, uh, you know, um, uh, release these blue light rays or the artificial light rays, the high intensity visible light rays. So you, next time you pick up a sunscreen, you, you pick up a sunscreen which has this protection as well. And the blue light in your, you know, from these sources actually giving you that little pigment. So before it gets worse, start, you know, applying a sunscreen which has blue light protection as well. Mr. Navneet is saying that he has, he's applying sun, you know, uh, sunscreen, but still his skin is dull. Okay. So, um, yeah, it's, a uh, it's a very good question. Like I said earlier that, uh, you know, sunscreen, uh, uh, is not a fairness product. It's not a brightening product. So uh, it, but it is a, it is a sun protection product or, uh, it's a blue light protection product. So, you know, so uh, for, to make your skin glow, you will have to take more antioxidants. You should, uh, you know, you should hydrate yourself uh, well. Take a lot of vitamin uh, C, apply vitamin C, take vitamin E, you know. So uh, make sure that your, you know, um, uh, you know, moisturizer or, uh, you know, your night cream has hyaluronic acid in it. And all of these small, small ingredients will make sure that your skin glows. You know, sunscreen is not the the, uh, the uh, thing that will make your skin glow. So that's why, you know, since we're not working on the dull skin, uh, you know, so that's the reason why it's not working for you. Um, Akansha is, has a nice question. Is tinted sunscreen better than normal? that's that's not there so tinted is basically for for somebody who wants to uh, do away with a, a, another layer of makeup so you know or you want to cover little blemishes so tinted sunscreen is for that but uh, there is there is no difference in efficacy between the tinted sunscreen and a normal sunscreen it's just for coverage of your uh, you know uh, pigmentation blemishes uh, etc um Mr. Sushil has a question, which sunscreen would you suggest for the places where humidity is very high and people sweat a lot? That's a very important question. So um, new sunscreens have this mention that they are sweat resistant. So you can pick up a sunscreen which is sweat resistant, but if you sweat a lot, believe me, then you will have to dab away with the sunscreen and reapply. What you can do additionally over here that since calamine has you know drying effect, so if you you can apply a you know a, a, a fine layer of calamine, then apply your sunscreen. So it it's going to you know help uh, you know decrease the sweat. But if you are still sweating a lot, then you are you know so there the is the sweat resistant thing works only for a few minutes. So if you are dripping with sweat, then you will have to reapply your sunscreen. It is not going to work for you. Um, Mr. Durgesh has this question that uh, what does PA3 plus mean on the sunscreen? This is exactly what I was telling Durgeshi that boot star rating it means PA, uh, you know, rating and 3 plus uh, or 4, uh, you know, is recommended for Indian skin. So the star rating or plus rating or PA rating is what you need to see in your sunscreen if you want to stay protected from UV rays as well. SPF is only giving you protection from, S, you know, UVB rays. Shailendra ji has another interesting question. Does higher SPF mean better protection? No. Like I told in the beginning, so it's not like a linear scale. So SPF 30 is giving 97 protection and SPF 50 is giving 98% protection, but there is no sunscreen which gives you 100% protection. So uh, eventually you, uh, you will need to apply, reapply your sunscreen and high, applying a high, uh, you know, SPF is not, it's not uh, directly proportional to better protection protection.
uh, Jitender uh, Kumar thanks me for giving clarity on sunscreen and sunblock and that's great. Uh, Kavita has a question how much uh, you know quantity sunscreen to apply so like I said earlier so, uh, a teaspoon and a half for you know uh, the face and neck that's good enough uh, you know uh, sun amount for the face and neck area to, uh, to apply. And uh, Prakashi has a question, you know, I'm having a product which is 25% vitamin C along with vitamin A, vitamin B, vitamin E and polyphenols. Is it okay? So, uh, you know, um, uh, here I would like to differ. So there are some things which will work together. So some chemicals work as an agonist and some work as an antagonist so some some chemicals will support each other's action and some chemicals will negate each other's action so like vitamin c and e they work together with each other because of great antioxidants so you can pick up a product which has you know vitamin c e and hyaluronic acid in it while vitamin a actually you know is a, not a photo stable product so you need to uh, you know apply actually any vitamin a based products any you know retinol based products for that matter at night only in the day they they break down they're not photo stable they're photo lebai products so they're not going to work together so i think this combination is uh, is uh, is uh, amongst this it's not all all of them so maybe there's not causing any side effect but they're not actually going to be as effective as it's this product is claiming so this I think you'll have to pick, you know pick up one which has vitamin C vitamin E and hyaluronic acid because all three of them will work along with each other and if it has a pyrolic acid in it even better but you can additionally separately apply vitamin A but that's at night don't mix it together Uh, Puneet has a question that he he wants to know that which um, cream is good for blackheads you know so blackheads are basically your or, you know your pores which have sebum and uh, because they're open pores they're not closed pores so they they have this sebum or the oil in the pores has oxidized you know and that like how your apple when it becomes oxidized if you cut and keep it outside it becomes black similarly the oil which is there in the pores that it becomes oxidized becomes you know uh, it's black that's why you have a blackhead you know so there is no cream which will take away the blackheads you will have to get it extracted is, but to prevent further um, blackhead protection uh, production, you can use uh, you know a vitamin A based uh, cream because they help in cell uh, uh, turnover regulation, and uh, that will take care you know for to, uh, to prevent uh, blackheads in future. But once you have it, you will have to remove it. Uh, Yes, Randy, I did uh, just answer this question when, when I said retinol will work in whiteheads. Yes, they'll work in blighted and uh, in uh, blackheads, but they will work as a preventive measure. Once you have it, you know, you'll have to eventually extract it. There are a lot of, uh, you know, methods that we do in clinics. So from, you know, actual comedon extraction to, you know, derma abrasion to hydrofacials to chemical peel. But you, it's, it's, don't squeeze it. Please don't squeeze it. You're going to scar it. You, you so get uh, in some in clinic procedure done and then to prevent it that uh, you know uh, uh, that you again and again have this you can start using a retinol based at night only yes this is mr shelley has a nice question when i apply sunscreen after i apply sunscreen i start perspiring uh, is there a clarity between the particular sunscreen is good for my skin so you know some uh, physical sunscreens you know because they form a coating over the skin they uh, and they tend to be a little thicker uh, in and greasier in the texture so that's the reason why you know you start sweaty when you you know so use a sunscreen which is a combination of a little uh, bit of physical and chemical properties uh, and if you use a mineral based sunscreen you know you will see the difference you will see that you know you don't perspire as much so uh, that's something that you can uh, you know do and uh, since i i think i've answered so many uh, questions and uh, There is another question. 
yeah which sunscreen is safe mr sailesh has a question which suns are all sunscreen safe for in skin no so uh, i like i mentioned this earlier so you know there are some things that you need to avoid in the sunscreen so uh, you you check that your sunscreen is oxy benzone free ox, octisogenate free and paraben free these are the things we don't want in the sunscreen not if not all sunscreens are safe look for mineral based sunscreens like which have titanium oxide and zinc oxide all of this is mentioned at the back of your sunscreen you know in a product it's mentioned ingredients so you know as a intelligent consumer you know whenever you're buying any uh, you know skin care products because you see there's so many products available in the market as you so safety and efficacy are both very important so whenever you pick up uh, any product see you know the ingredients uh, behind and in the front as well so there could be a lot of claims that will be written in the front but also check you know what is written behind and that's why i'm trying to help you out here so that you know which one to pick and etc so since we have uh, uh, yes supreet uh, mr supreet has a question and he's asking that what are the remedies for oily skin okay so um, let's begin with uh, you know using salicylic acid based cleanser you know so salicylic acid 2% salicylic acid based cleanser are readily available in the market so they will a uh, salicylic acid tends to uh, absorb and uh, clean away all your uh, you know oil or sebum in the skin and that's that's one thing that you can do and um, uh, of course if you uh, if you ask what in clinic uh, you know procedures that we can uh, do so we do something called as micro uh, botox or meso botox and that also works very well uh, to you know to uh, take away uh, the oily greasy uh, you know uh, look on the face so the, and you once done it will last you for about 4 to 6 months depending on what how uh, you know oily or how you know what kind of uh, skin that you had earlier Uh, but that's something we can, we do at our, at our uh, clinics but uh, at home you can pick up a salicylic acid based uh, face wash or a cleanser and uh, that will that will take care beautifully of your oily skin if it is just a, uh, you know a little bit oily uh, but if it is too much then probably you can also uh, you know go for this procedure um i have randy who is asking me what can be done about uh, about clearing dark circle now this is a very uh, important uh, question over here but it's deviating from our uh, topic you know so uh, and especially the element because all of us are going to wear masks now so if you already have randy if you already have dark circles you, you know so earlier we could uh, you know we were seeing the entire face but now the dark circle is going to get highlighted even more because of covering the rest of the face with the mask so uh, so it, i'm going still going to help you out over here even though we are talking about sunscreen uh, start applying a hyaluronic acid and a vitamin k based uh, you know cream uh, twice in the day uh, take a fingertip quantity and between the fingertips just uh, you know circle it around uh, you know don't massage it very vigorously is something that you can start doing uh, uh, as soon as possible and that something will help in uh, improving the blood circulation around the uh, eye and uh, it will also help in decreasing the fine lines of course once this uh, phase of uh, you know lockdown and etc gets better nothing works uh, like uh, you know hyaluronic acid based fillers they work magically they work magically so uh, start applying this at home and uh, later on you, you can consult you know a dermatologist in your area and you can you know opt for hyaluronic acid based uh, fillers but remember that you need to pick up uh, um, an expert uh, uh, you know injector who is uh, you know don't uh, just because you were now getting interested in this so i need to make sure that not everybody is into injecting so you need to pick somebody who is you know in thorough with that uh, you know and uh, procedure additionally what you can also do is start wearing polaroid uh, you know sunglasses you know, so they also will help in give you some amount of additional sun protection and help you in further you know uh, you know the pigmentation around the eyes you know they will not they will prevent it from further worsening kavita is asking me a very important question doctor should i use sunscreen at night time no kavita uh, the, we don't uh, need sunscreen at night time but yes if you are, are walking through the night 
on the computer like you you know you are so with this multinational company which is working at odd hours and you are working in front of your of your laptop during the night or you have night shifts actually then probably you will have to apply you know and th- but then i'm not asking you to apply a sunscreen i'm asking you to apply a sunscreen which has blue light or artificial light protection so but if you're just staying at home and you are you know you're not working then there is no need to apply a sunscreen rather you know apply uh, you can you can apply a, a, a aloe vera gel you can apply vitamin e based capsules at night you can apply serums which have vitamin c ferulic acid you know they they are nice antioxidants and you know they'll take care of a damage which is done through the day so you can apply it before your sunscreen you can apply it even at night so they, they, they that is what i would recommend Aniket, I've already answered this question that you know which ingredients should we look in a good sunscreen. So you should look for SPF 30. You should look for infrared rays protection, high intensity visible light protection, and a boot star rating above three plus. This is what you should look for in your sunscreen. And the chemicals that you should see that which are there is zinc and titanium oxide. And uh, you know avoid the harmful chemicals that I've already mentioned earlier. You know. earlier so uh, you know uh, we i think we have i have done uh, with lot of queries that you have come and they all interesting questions that you asked i'm so glad that you stayed hooked up till the end and um, so uh, before we leave uh, i would like to give you one tip on tanning you know because that's what everybody wants to you know uh, 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 me to answer that what what do i do to uh, you know uh, uh, remove the tan so Uh, there are a lot of uh, things that are uh, available on internet that people are doing on their own but scrubbing is not a good idea so a lot of people scrub and then you know the tanning get good get, get worse that's not a good idea uh, opt for chemical peels there are a lot of options available and chemical peels these days are gel based peels literally don't peel off your skin so opt for you know ferulic acid based peels glycolic acid based peels and uh, you know they, they they'll work wonders and they'll remove all the tan and you know and they, they will do it gently because they are calculated and etc and believe me when you pick up the right uh, you know chem, chem, uh, uh, chemical peel product and you go to the you know right uh, 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 you know uh, doctor you, your problem is going to get solved all this scrubbing at home uh, you know etc will not work uh, you know as effectively to prevent tanning yes to prevent tanning you know start taking eating applying vitamin c as much as possible so i'm going to sign off here uh, and uh, with giving you the last you know take home message that uh, you know sunscreens have to be applied all through the year it's it's going to be like a habit you know so like brushing your teeth is a habit twice a day you brush your teeth sunscreen application is a habit round the clock you have to apply your sunblock you know so if you please stay protected we are in a uh, you know even though we're talking about sunscreen believe me in the back of my mind also the you know the, the only thing which is uh, you know uh, going is the corona and what you know how it is taking uh, a toll in our lives and i pray uh, for all of you that you stay safe you stay healthy you stay protected uh, you know and uh, uh, this is dr rituparna dash from dash dermatology uh, i who is uh, you know who was here to help you all with your all your queries if you have any further questions you can you know log into my page dash dermatology and you can ask me questions there but for now i think i'll say ciao bye bye